Good morning. And welcome to every one of you who have gathered here today at the Star of the Sea Church and also to all of those who are watching us via the live stream on this, the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. A very special welcome also to all visitors who have joined us in prayer today. Let us take a moment to turn around and say hello to each other. Today's gospel reading describes the beginning of Jesus' ministry and his first miracle. Jesus' response to a simple human need is a vision for us of the abundance of God's kingdom. Father Ronnie will lead us in the Eucharist today, so please stand and join the choir in the entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, dear friends. This Sunday we see the presence of Jesus and Mary brings blessings to into a family at Cana. And in this Mass, let us pray to God, come to our families and our personal lives so that we can be more blessed. Before we start, let us also think of our shortcomings and failures. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. About Zion, I will not be silent. About Jerusalem, I will not grow weary until her integrity shines out like the dawn and her salvation flames like a torch. The nations will then see you, see your integrity, all the kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name one which the mouth of the Lord will comfort. You are to be a crown of splendor in the hand of the Lord, a princely diadem in the hand of your God. No longer are you to be named forsaken, nor your land abandoned, but you shall be called my delight and your land the wedded. For the Lord takes delight in you, and your land, your, your land will have its wedding, like a young man marrying a virgin. So with the one who built you, wed you. And as the bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so will your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord, blessed his name. Pro proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Claim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Worship the Lord in his temple. O earth, tremble before him. Proclaim to the nations, God is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done but always to the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. One may have the gift of preaching with wisdom given him by the Spirit. Another may have the gift of preaching instruction given him by the same Spirit, and another the gift of faith given by the same Spirit, another again the gift of healing through this one Spirit, one the power of miracles, another prophecy, another the gift of recognizing spirits, 
another the gift of tongues, and another the ability to interpret them. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit, who distributes different gifts to different people, just as he chooses. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When, then, when they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone water jars standing there, meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each would hold Twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water, and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said, People generally serve the best wine first and keep the cheaper sort till the guests have had plenty to drink. But you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. You, Jesus. <clears throat> Today's readings tells us about the true identity of Jesus, who he is, and what his mission is. In the Old Testament, wine was often used as a sign or symbol of the gifts of God. The book of Proverbs speak of lady wisdom providing good wine for those who follow her. And the prophets often speak of good wine as a symbol of messianic kingdom promised by God. And today, John's gospel reflects that same image by using the gift of the best wine as the first miracle of Jesus' public life. Just as Jesus gave wine as a gift to the newly wed family, so Jesus gives us gifts. So we heard from St. Paul tells us that God gives each of us different gifts so that we too can be signs of God's goodness and love. What we use, our gifts, according to his will and for the good of all the people living with us. 
what we can take from today's gospel. First, let us invite Jesus and Mary to remain with us in our homes. When we feel shortages of love, compassion, care, and understanding in our lives, let us invite them. We need Jesus and Mary when our dreams are gone, mutual love seems dried up, the relationship becomes boring, and we feel dryness in our spiritual life. Let us welcome Jesus and Mary into our personal life. The awareness of the presence of Jesus and Mary in the family and in our lives will encourage ourselves to make an atmosphere of prayer, mutual love, respect, and understanding with a spirit of forgiveness and sacrificial service at home. Secondly, let us follow Mary's instruction. Do whatever he tells you. This is the only recorded command given by Mary in the New Testament, and it is an essential for miracles in our families. Do whatever he tells you. That means to do, first we need to listen to Jesus, what he's about to say to us. The Bible tells us how to do the will of God and effect changes in our daily lives. Just as Jesus filled the empty water jars with wine, let us fill the empty hearts around us with love. By the miracle of Cana, Jesus challenges us also to enrich the empty lives of those around us with a new life of love, mercy, concern, and care. Let us learn to appreciate the miracles of God's providence in our lives. God often, as an uninvited guest in our families, works daily miracles in our lives by protecting us from physical and moral damages, providing for our needs, inspiring us, and strengthening us with his Holy Spirit. Dear friends, we are reflecting upon a beautiful gospel passage that us take into our heart. Theologians call it as a gospel of changes. We see the first time Mary asking to Jesus to do something for the people. For the first time, and maybe for the last time, water became wine. And for the first time, Jesus made a miracle. And in John's Gospel, it's written first time his disciple believed in him. So this is called a gospel of changes. Let us take this gospel into our life and into our families so that we can be in the presence of Jesus and Mary so that we can make changes in our family lives and in our personal lives. Let's pray together. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, a life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let's bring our intentions before the Lord, who we trust in love. That as the true bride of Christ, the Holy Church will work in loving service of the gospel. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That all married people will, will remain in love and faithfulness to each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That local organizations who work with the disadvantage will serve with a spirit of hospitality and charity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That like the wedding couple at Cana, those preparing for marriage will be granted the blessing of Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and housebound will be blessed and find comfort and healing through Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died will be called to the feast of Christ's everlasting kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you turn the water into our new wine of eternal joy. Hear our prayers and help us to trust in your words as we live your gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Put of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my impurity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. For the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Archbishop, our auxiliary bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done for earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to take the word, but I am the same word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe from today. May the blood of Christ save from today.
Thank you, everyone, all those present here and those in our online mass, attending the online mass, and wishing you all the blessings of the Lord the coming week. Let us stand for final blessing. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.